Utilizing safety encoders opens up a whole new application area for AS Interface. Here we have an encoder and we will be able to determine if the encoder is at a stop, if it is spinning at a less than critical rate, and even safely determine if it moves left or right. Hi, my name is Holger Hornes. I'm the manager for Intelligent Systems at Pepper & Fuchs. And today I will show you how to utilize a safe encoder on an AS Interface system. In today's demonstration, we will be using the safety encoder to determine safe stop, safe limit speed, and safe rotation. We will also utilize an e-stop to shut down the safety system and a door in a lock switch. First I will connect the AS Interface Intelligent e-stop. It will go on this passive splitter and receive power and communication via the ASI network. Secondly, I will connect the door in a lock switch on another passive splitter this one with a pigtail. The safety encoder will be connected to this AS interface module using a mini I.O. connector. This module enables two encoders to be connected and is going to be configured to check for safe speed, safe off, and direction of rotation. Lastly, I will use this passive bridge device and this cable to connect the safety encoder module to the network. Now that everything is powered, we can actually connect to the safety controller and configure the encoder safety module. Simon Plus is running and, as indicated by the green status bar at the bottom of the screen, is already communicating with a K30 safety controller. Since we are going to configure a new application, we first have to stop the safety controller. This operation is password protected. Next, we use the new command to start a new configuration. This brings up the information about monitor and bus window. Every configuration needs a title. As the title will be used as part of the documentation that is automatically generated in the background, make sure you pick something meaningful reflecting the safety operation. Clicking the bus information tab brings up the screen identifying the addresses of the AS interface modules we are using. This does not assign addresses to modules on the network. That is usually done with a handheld, but reserves them within Simon Plus. 1A is the diagnostics address I assigned to the safety encoder module earlier using the handheld. If you need to see how this is done, consider watching our video on this topic. Next, I am reserving safe addresses 2, 3, and 4. These will be used by the safety encoder module to signal safe stop, safe speed, and safe direction of rotation. Safe address 5 is the e-stop, and safe address 6 is the protective door switch. It is common to have a conventional, non-safe input as a restart, and in this case it has address 7a. Now we are going to configure the encoder module by selecting the speed monitor command from the Extras drop-down menu. As soon as the Configure Speed Monitor window opens, Simon Plus scans the network for any connected encoder modules. Our encoder at address 1A was found. If desirable, the encoder configuration can be given a more specific name. Selecting the Speed tab allows us to configure the safe limit speed. We have only one encoder connected to channel 1 and are thus going to enter a number only for channel 1. Entering 35 means that any rotational speed that results in an encoder output frequency of less than 35 Hz is considered safe. 
On the Address tab, those safe addresses representing the safe data we need for the application are configured. Address 2 will signal when the encoder is spinning at a rate below the overspeed limit of 35 Hz we defined previously. Address 3 will signal when the encoder has stopped. And Address 4 will signal when the encoder is turning in the minus direction. For this application example, we are not interested in determining when the encoder is turning in the plus direction and we do not have an encoder connected on channel 2. This is indicated by a zero in those address selection boxes. The stop tab allows us to set the output frequency of the encoder when it has stopped moving. This number needs to be at least 2 Hz. Lower numbers make no sense from an application point of view either, as even the smallest vibrations would cause the signal to indicate that the rolls are moving. Plus, the lower the frequency, the longer it takes to safely detect motion at all. Consequently, many applications will utilize gearing such that even low rates of rotation result in an appreciable output frequency of the encoder. With all addresses and encoder frequencies set, we go back to the Configuration tab to download the configuration to the encoder module and thus the memory card. The encoder module we are using has not been used before and in addition to the validator name, it is also necessary to set a new four-digit password. After that, the download will start. Once the download is completed, the configuration protocol is uploaded. This information can be printed or saved for later printing and should always be part of the system documentation. Having configured the encoder module, we can start putting together the safety logic. If you have never seen Simon Plus, you may need to know that this is done by dropping function blocks onto the process window. Feel free to watch one of the many movies we have on our www.sensing.net slash ASI webpage. I usually start by selecting the output first, a category 0, immediate stop in this case. Since it is used to remove power from the motor, I call it motor. Next I'm adding the restart condition using a standard slave the push button module with address 7a. The restart operation is associated with the most significant bit in 3. Now it is time to add the safety devices. Here is the e-stop on address 5, connected directly to the global AND function. Placing the e-stop function block here assures that it will always be able to remove power from the motor, no matter what else we are going to configure. The OR function block is used to set up the logic that deals with the safety encoder signals and the protective door. Just recall that the output of the OR is true as long as at least one of its connected inputs is true. Adding the protective door function means that as long as the door is closed, the OR will be true. No matter the state of any other function block, we will be adding to this OR block later. Next we start working on the encoder signals. This delay is necessary since safe function blocks turn false quickly, but will not turn true unless numerous internal checks have been performed. The delay assures that the motor remains powered during this time. We also need an AND function here along with another delay. Please recall that the output of the AND function will only be true if all its connected inputs are true. A single false input will result in the AND going to the false state. The first speed monitor signal we will be using represents the safe stop signal, 3 Hz in our case, transmitted as safe address 3. This block will be true as long as the encoder is not spinning, or rather spinning at a rate lower than 3 Hz configured earlier. Since this function block, through the delay, is an input of the OR, this allows the operator to open the protective door as long as the press is not moving. Remember, as long as one of the OR inputs is true, the motor remains powered. But this is not enough. By dropping another speed monitor function block, this one signaling safe direction, we are essentially adding the condition that the motor remains powered even if the encoder is turning, as long as it is spinning in the desired direction. This piece of information comes in via safe address 4. Now we have to deal with an overspeed situation. 
by dropping another speed monitor function block here, this one verifying that the speed of rotation is below the limit speed or critical rate, we assure that the motor is only powered as long as the press is spinning at less than the critical rate. The AND function enforces that both conditions are met, spinning in the proper direction and at less than the critical rate. The safe overspeed signal is received via address 2. Lastly, the configuration needs to be downloaded to the safety controller. After entering the password, the download proceeds, after which the safety code sequence of the connected hardware devices can be taught. At the end of the download process, the plain text configuration log is uploaded. It needs to be reviewed and should always be part of the machine documentation. As part of the validation step, the name of the validator along with a password must be entered. The name of the validator, a timestamp, and a security code, in addition to details about the configuration and all the modules on the network, are stored in the safety controller. After signing off on the validation screen, the safety controller can be activated, and that brings up the diagnostic screen. Now we need to verify the safety operation of the system. Pushing the green reset button will restart the contactor. I will have to verify that my e-stop does in fact turn off the contactor immediately. And it does. Pulling out the e-stop, I'm allowed to reset the system. When the safety door is closed, the machine can freely rotate in any direction at uh, any speed without shutting down the motor and that operation is verified. Let's then go and assume that maintenance gains access to the system. As long as the press is not moving, this will not shut down the system so the contactor is still closed. Now we will command the motor to turn slowly and expect that the contactor remains closed. Should, due to a fault, the motor ever spin at an excessive rate, we expect an immediate shutdown and the contactor drops out. So the last operation we need to verify is that when the press moves in the reverse direction, the contactor immediately shuts down. So I will spin the encoder in the reverse direction, which leads to an immediate shutdown. Using the safety encoder, it is now possible to determine safe speed, safe stop, and safe direction of rotation. This opens up entirely new application areas for safety. For instance, setup and maintenance. Please check out our other videos on YouTube and don't forget to go to our ASI Solutions page for more details.